kids, Mr. and Fly here, hope you're well. Now, I've been lucky enough to borrow this bike from KTM UK for the last couple of weeks. I've ridden the absolute pants off it. I've done a good few hundred miles and uh, all in order to get a sort of a feel for what it's like to live with one of these bikes. So uh, in the video coming up, it's gonna be, you know, not just a normal review like you would get if you've just ridden the bike for an hour, but this is a, a, a review look at the slightly odder things. So, you know, what's it like to ride at night? What's it like to ride in the wet? Uh, How is it around town? All that sort of stuff. So stick around, stay tuned, and I'll tell you what it's like to live with the KTM RC 390. So what's the uh, KTM like in town then? Well, as you'd expect, for such a very light bike, it's absolutely perfect uh, in and around traffic because you can nip into gaps, scythe through little spaces, and it's completely unintimidating to ride. So if you've got to do a daily commute on your bike, then this would be a perfect machine to do that. You wouldn't be able to carry too much, of course, because it's, uh, of course, a sports bike, so you'd have to wear a rucksack if you've got to carry your stuff to work, but uh, as far as actually riding it in traffic, no issue at all. So what about the uh, KTM at night time then? Well, it's not absolutely uh, pitch dark out here, but it is uh, dark enough to have to have the lights on, and uh, I can tell you that these lights are pretty darn good on here. These are those sort of projector type bulbs or lenses, and they really do throw the light out well. This is on dip beam, and again, these GoPro cameras really don't show it up very well at night, but uh, this is uh, throwing quite a nice spread of light out ahead of me and a good distance ahead, so that uh, I can actually see where I'm going. So it's much better than some bikes I've ridden. Um, and if I put it onto full beam, uh, it seems to go quite a lot brighter and throw a lot further, as you'd expect. So I'm pretty impressed by the light, so I have to say, one of the... Uh, really great features of this bike at night, which is something that's very rare on motorcycles these days, is a switch gear. We I mean, take a look at these babies. They're actually lit up at night, so you can see what you're pressing. Now, why don't all motorcycles do that? That is just brilliant. So you don't have to, uh, you know, learn what buttons what off by heart, although you'll quickly come to know that on this bike, but you can actually see where your fingers are going. That's a real plus point for the little KTM. Not only that, it's got a conventional flasher as well on the front here. If you want to flash somebody, you just, you know, you literally just pull that back like a trigger and your light flashes. And as soon as you take your finger off, it stops flashing. And you know, that's the way it should work as far as I'm concerned. So I'm coming up into a much darker bit here covered by trees. Let's put her on to. So there's dip beam and there's full beam. And yeah, it's a good spread of light. You can ride with that in, uh, you know, feeling pretty safe that you know what's coming along. So as far as I'm concerned, it's thumbs up for the KTM at night, no issues whatsoever. Fan on this bike is really quite loud. So what about uh, on the motorway then for the KTM? Well, even though it's got a pretty small engine, it's quite capable of keeping up with normal motorway speeds. Here we are, look, 68 miles an hour in the overtaking lane on the motorway. And uh, it's got plenty more to give. Wind protection wise, I have to say this stock screen isn't brilliant. There's quite a lot of wind coming at me, but it's uh, a nice smooth airflow. It's not a turbulence, so I'm not being buffeted around, so it's actually okay. Although I'm uh, in the full wind blast, it's certainly uh, no worse, it's probably a little bit better than riding a naked bike, but uh, it's not, the fairing isn't that effective at keeping the wind off you. But certainly again, if your regular journeys contain a bit of dual carriageway or motorway work, this bike is completely capable of uh, doing so. Again, you're not going to be, you know, doing cross-continent stuff, cruising at 90 miles an hour for hours on end, but the bike and the engine feels perfectly comfortable here doing an indicated, well, 75 on the motorway, no problems at all. So I'm just riding through a summertime shower now, the roads are a bit sort of greasy, there's some uh, puddles left from heavy overnight rain and it's just sort of uh, one of those steady showers underway now. So the roads are a little bit slippy, but I have to say the OEM tyres that come with the machine keep me quite a lot of confidence. I'll stay clear of the white markings, but cornering and so on, plenty of grip. Doesn't feel at all precarious in the rain.
Okay, so as I've been riding the bike and using it over the last couple of weeks, there are a number of things that struck me about the bike that I really wanted to tell you. So I've made a few notes in my notebook, and these are in no uh, particular order, good or bad. They're just general points that, uh, that struck me as, as, as I was riding the bike. Well, the first thing to say is that this is uh, one of KTM's global bikes. They sell it around the world. And you may have read that it's Indian built, which is absolutely true. It's built in an Indian factory. But please don't see that as a bad thing. In fact, you can see it as a good thing, because it's built in the Bajaj factory, I understand. Uh, and I have to say the build quality on this is lovely. The welding is absolutely fine. Uh, the paint finish is lustrous. I think uh, from a fit and finish point of view, the bike is, is really lovely. I think from here onwards, the bike looks great. I personally don't much like the front of the bike, I have to say. Um, but actually, the, the back end um, and the quality, no issues there. So don't be put off by the fact it's Indian built. In fact, I think you can see that as a plus. Those factories knock out thousands of bikes every year. Those guys know what they're doing. Um, oh yeah, okay, as I say, I'm jumping around with this. Fuel range. It's got a fuel range indicator on the, uh, on the dash. Uh, it does jump around quite a bit though, a little bit more than other bikes that I've ridden, so it doesn't kind of settle down as easily or over time. So if you ride the bike really hard, you'll see that the fuel range goes down a lot. If you ease off, the fuel range goes up as you'd expect, but it happens quite a lot. So it's quite difficult to tell what sort of range you get out of a tank. All I can say is I've filled it up twice since I've had it, uh, and it seems to me to be quite frugal. That's all I can say on the fuel range, really. Um, I mentioned on my initial review that I didn't like the looks of the indicators. That's still, that's still true. But uh, what I didn't realise when I did the initial ride is that, in fact, the indicators are in the, uh, in the stalks on the mirrors. So that's why the mirrors are uh, designed in that way. Um, so just, uh, just point that out because it was something I hadn't noticed before. Um, it is a little bit of a vibey bike, it has to be said. Again, I didn't notice this originally, but now having ridden it a lot around town and so on, if you don't get it in the right gear, uh, the bike does chug a bit and you do get some vibrations. It is a big single cylinder bike. You do have to change and use the gearbox a lot on it to make sure you're in the sweet spot for the, for the revs. Vibes aren't a huge issue, but through the pegs and through the handlebars, if you get it wrong, there are a bit of vibes. So just bear that in mind uh, if that's important to you. Um, Clutch, really, really light on this bike. It's got a slipper clutch. In fact, it's over that side, of course. Uh, it's got a slipper clutch on the bike, and that means it's got a really light action. I really like that about it. Didn't mention that in the original review. Really, really nice. Um, lots of other things I like about it. Um, it's easy to manoeuvre in and out of the garage. Turning circle, not so great, uh, but you will see that in a minute. Um, oh, pillion. I haven't actually ridden the bike with a pillion because I'm a bit anti-pillion on sports bike, but this is very clever, actually, about the way they've designed it. It's got an unusually comfortable seat for a KTM, uh, but if you look at this one, you can see that it's designed to look as if it's got kind of a racing hump, but in fact, that isn't a racing hump, that is a pillion seat, so it's perfectly um, able to take a pillion on here in some comfort as well, so that's quite an, quite an interesting thing as well, I thought. Okay, so that was about it, uh, I think, uh, for everything that I, that I made notes of in the notes. Um, yeah, that was about it. <laughs> so what's the bike like to uh, manhandle around then in a car park or garage or whatever? Well, it is a very light bike, as I've said many times, so it's actually very, very easy to pick up, move around. If you're somebody of smaller stature, then you'll have no problem whatsoever shifting this around. The only thing I would say is the turning circle is pretty rubbish on these handlebars. They don't actually move that far. Um, so the turning circle's not very good, but it's so thin and so light, this bike, you've got no problem moving it around. One thing I have noticed about the uh, KTM, Alyssa, is that when you're uh, going at slower speeds, so if you're in an urban environment like this and maybe doing 30 miles an hour or thereabouts, that uh, you do get quite a bit of heat around your backside. I think it's probably because uh, the KTM engineer has been very clever and folded up the uh, what I call Catholic converter <laughs> uh, underneath you know, where the engine is rather than under slinging it under the bike and it makes the bike look neat, but that has the effect of having that hot uh, part of the muffler actually underneath you. Actually, in the UK, that's not a terrible thing because it keeps you nice and warm. And it's not a particularly warm day today, so it's quite nice. But uh, in the summer, that might be a problem, or if you're in a hotter climate, that might be an issue for you. So what about the RC390 as a touring bike then? Well, it's certainly comfortable enough to do big miles on. The seat is nice and comfortable, especially for a KTM. And uh, the handlebars are nice and wide. I don't feel at all fatigued riding on it for, you know, fairly long periods of time. So certainly I don't think there's any issue with its comfort or its power for touring. The only issue I can see for touring is really just luggage capacity. So you'd have to get yourself some uh, throw-over panniers or, uh, or a rucksack or both, but that's no big deal. So yeah, I think you could tour on it and uh, very frugally. So as a tourer, I think it would work. Definitely for me, the best feature of this little bike is its handling. On, you know, fairly decent back rows like this, you can really chuck it about. And it's kind of eager character, lightweight chuckability shines through. It's uh, 
Probably a fun little bike to ride. So what about my favourite subject of cleaning the bike? Well, there's no real issue with the uh, KTM, except for this uh, strangely designed front windscreen. There's no way you can get in these nooks and crannies with a cloth and successfully dry them. So you really do need a bike dryer uh, if you're going to be a bit obsessive about cleaning like I am. Even with the uh, bike dryer, I still found it quite difficult to get all the uh, little water spats out of the windscreen area. But other than that, no issue. So there we have it kids, that's my uh, living with review of the KTM RC390. My overwhelming uh, view of the bike is it's just light and fun and agile, it's a great fun little bike. I mean it's not perfect as you've heard but uh, the good things far outweigh the bad. Uh, for me the sort of elephant in the room is the looks of the bike, it just doesn't do it for me at all. Um, I find the looks a little bit too odd. But they may appeal to you and if you can get around the looks then that's great. But in terms of practical practicality of owning it, you know, she's frugal, she's fun, she's flickable. Really uh, great as a, as a commuter bike or maybe a first sports bike after a 125, then you wouldn't go far wrong with the uh, RC390. Okay, so I hope that's uh, been of some interest to you. I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Mr. Dunfly. Cheerio.